section 6.0. I'm very happy to have all of you here today uh, because I think we've had a break for so long and finally we have managed to get something going. And um, today is going to be the first time we're going to do it online and hopefully we can continue doing this because I think it's easier for everybody uh, and it's easier to find a location also. <laughs> So anyway, let's just get started quickly. Um, yes, if you would have not known about our Facebook group, please join. Our Facebook group is at, uh, just search for Hackware on Facebook. That's where we do most of the discussions. Otherwise, if you don't like Facebook, you can be on meetup.com. Then we'll post our meetup there. Um, yeah, it's meetup.com slash Hackware. And so this is the team. Uh, Chin Mei, myself, Ching Xuan, King Ming, Luther, Sudarshan, and Ambrose. If you guys are here, please shout out. Uh, and we are always looking for new organizers uh, to come on board and help us continue the organizing the meetups. Uh, it's, it's a free and easy thing, you know, at the end of the day, we just want to come together and talk about hardware and how we continue developing it. So please just ping me if you uh, like to be uh, one of the organizers. Um, anybody has any upcoming uh, events which you would like to promote? Please uh, just share it on the chat group, I guess. I guess. And also join our Discord server. I think it's still active. Please, uh, yeah, you can discuss there. And I would like to thank uh, today's session. Uh, which is sponsored by Engineers or SG. They'll be recording this session, I believe. Uh, so you can, uh, if you miss any part of the talk by Alex later, you can watch it at engineers.sg uh, website. And let's move on to the um, meetup immediately. Uh, we only have one speaker today because unfortunately, Xiao Xiong can't be uh, on board. So maybe he'll be uh, presenting next hardware. So look out for that. Uh, on our meetup groups. Uh, so I think Alex uh, can introduce himself better. So he'll be talking about his DIY Exa Gaming controller today. Please, Alex, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. All right, so uh, I'm not a stranger to hardware meetups. I've been presenting a few uh, little things before. So this is the first time we are doing this online. So this time, um, so to say, necessity is the mother of invention. Uh, for me personally, uh, the biggest problem I've encountered during these two plus months of staying at home is lack of physical activity. So I quickly realized that I'm just you know, becoming a vegetable, picking up weight and uh, the energy is now there, the brain it doesn't work as uh, clearly and sharply as I would like it uh, to be. And uh, well, the solution to the problem obviously is exercise, exercise, and exercise. And um, if uh, you were lucky to uh, buy some kind of an exercise machine before the lockdown and before Decathlon uh, ran out of stock, so you might think that your problem is solved, right? But then you quickly encounter the next one. When you have to do it every single day, very quickly find out that it is incredibly boring. Really getting very boring very quick. Right, so um, I was thinking about how can I encourage myself to do more exercise and not to come up with any excuses to skip it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, well, the answer again is pretty obvious: need to make it fun, make it some kind of a game. And uh, actually, for a long time, I was thinking about how nice would it be to have, uh, say, a flight simulator where uh, you're playing flies uh, only as fast as you are pedaling, and obviously, if you stop you fall, so it's a good incentive to continue exercising, right? So uh, I thought, okay, if I can somehow hook up to the exercise machine and get the speed reading and uh, connect it with some kind of a joystick and find some uh, fun game to play, I'm going to be great, right? 
All right. So uh, before I started doing anything, I uh, gave a little thought uh, to design objectives. What I wanted to uh, come up with is some kind of a design which can be reasonably easily reproduced uh, by most of the makers in lockdown situation. That is, if you have access to a 3D printer, you uh, can order the parts from RS Online or DigiKey and have access to basic tools, you can uh, make the same thing. And um, obviously we don't want to use any exotic skills or parts or technologies. So deliberately low tech approach. So uh, start with so all exercise machines these days, they have some kind of a, a sensor and some kind of a device which shows you the progress, right? The problem is that uh, it is most of the time hidden inside the machine and there are no, not so many people willing to open it up and uh, avoid their warranty, et cetera, et cetera. And it's more complicated as well. So I began thinking, okay, how can I take the measurements without opening up the whole thing? And uh, obviously there are a few options about uh, what kind of sensor we can attach on the outside. And the most trouble free appears to be a magnetic sensor. That is, you uh, take a small magnet, like uh, the one I'm holding in my hand right now, you attach it to the moving part of your machine, and then you take a small sensor and tape it to the stationary part of your machine. And this will give you one click per uh, revolution. Right. And uh, another advantage of this approach is that uh, this obviously can be adapted to pretty much any kind of exercise machine, like a pepper or whatever. Well, uh, after all, you can you know put a magnet on your forehead and uh, do push-ups if you want. So, uh, luckily, magnetic sensors are. Uh, uh, cheap and uh, there are so many different models very easy to integrate so problem solved right now okay how to connect the sensor to a computer and here as uh, many times before i happen to be lucky because uh, there was an arduino uh, micro in my drawer which uh, i bought for some other project a few years ago but never had a chance to use and once I realized that it can present itself to the computer as a keyboard, with the help uh, from a little library, it can uh, pretend to be a joystick as well. So design, as you can see on the picture, is uh, very, very simple. Whoever can hook up a button to Arduino can repeat the same. Not a problem. Uh, one uh, thing to notice here is that Arduino itself is mounted on a panel. And the reason for that is that Arduino is roughly half of the cost of the whole thing. If uh, later you decide you have a better purpose for it, you can just pull it out and uh, use it for something else, right? So with uh, probably 40 lines of code, the integration was done. So how it uh, is detected by the uh, computer is a two axis uh, six button joystick with a throttle control. Originally I was thinking that maybe I should joystick and uh, implement only the throttle control, but it proved to be not a good idea because many games, uh, they do not really understand the joystick with a throttle control only. So in the end, I had to implement a full joystick by myself. So I'll show you how it works in the demo later. So hardware actually was the easy part. Uh, what proved to be difficult, surprisingly, is finding the right game. Because it has to be fun. It uh, has to be not very complicated. That is, uh, I tried a few realistic flight simulators and uh, they didn't really work uh, first because they were uh, 
quite boring. And second, because they required control much finer than you can get with a handheld joystick. And uh, after maybe a few days of trying lots of different games, which was uh, quite a fun process by itself, but anyway, I uh, found one which uh, made me happy. And uh, here the search stopped. Uh, the game is uh, Sky Rogue. And um, interesting thing is that uh, for those who, who are interested in space technologies, you obviously know the guy named uh, Scott Manley. So Scott Manley himself uh, has a review for this game. There will be a link in the end of the presentation if you want to see it. So it's uh, quite fun. Obviously, you uh, can use any other game if you want, whatever is. Uh, so it can work with a joystick or a gamepad, but uh, this one works nicely. Now, the next step was mechanical design. The idea again was that it should be easy to make on a 3D printer, so it should not require any complicated parts to assemble. So for that reason, I decided uh, against any uh, like screws or fancy connectors because okay where you get a screw or m2 screw of a specific size in a lockdown might be fairly difficult so i just decided to glue the parts together and um and notice here there are uh, three alignment pins the reason for that is that when you are gluing parts together with uh, instant glue you don't really have much time to align the parts precisely. So if you use the pins, you can achieve very precise alignment very quickly. And the pins itself, what it is, is actually a five millimeter long piece of the same filament I used for printing the casing. Uh, some other design ideas were that uh, it should be symmetric so that uh, both uh, right-handers and left-handers uh, would be able to handle it equally well. And uh, important thing is that on an exercise machine, it's a good idea to have you at least one your hand on some kind of a handle because well, safety is important. It would be no fun if you know, while playing the game, you fall off your exercise bike and get injured, right? So it has to be operated with one hand only. So uh, this was the second time consuming part of the process. So as you can see here, on the left, it was a, a minimal prototype which just barely covers all the parts. But obviously it proved to be, well, it didn't work well. It's just way too small. You cannot uh, you know, grip it comfortably and control it. So after a number of iterations, I arrived to the shape shown on the right. So it uh, now looks more like banana with a big red trigger button. So as you saw in the previous picture, the whole uh, casing consists basically of three parts, the upper half, the lower half, and the trigger, which is nice to be uh, looking nice in the red color if you have uh, the multiple colors available. All right. So, uh, once all parts are in place, you can start playing the games. Obviously, this is not a perfect thing. It, it is uh, good enough for me for now, but uh, if uh, I will ever plan uh, making more of this, there are a few changes I would make. So first of all, uh, what I didn't think of first is uh, emulating the standard gamepad buttons. So uh, the existing version has buttons in uh, a straight line, so you have to remember which one is which. And also colorful caps, button caps would be handy. And second is uh, the uh, socket I used to connect the sensor proved to be not very handy. So I would probably replace it with a 3.5 millimeters mini jack, which are also much more common and uh, easier to handle if you didn't, especially if you didn't have any experience with a 
scrimp and tools, or if you don't have the tools, easier just to solder it on a bit bigger, but it's not really a big problem. Because in the end, the casing, it's uh, probably 40% empty, so there's plenty of space inside. And uh, the last part, how much is uh, the fun basically? So for, if you are uh, to produce just one or a few copies of this, the cost of the whole thing is about 60 Singapore dollars and roughly half of it is uh, Arduino Micro itself. And the second most expensive uh, component is the joystick. Probably because uh, the one I uh, found is to use this from Spark Fun, and well, Spark Fun things are not cheap, unfortunately. But if uh, somebody would be interested to uh, produce this controller in uh, like really big quantities, it should be pretty easy to bring the cost down to maybe twenty dollars or something like this. First of all, obviously, get rid of Arduino and just work with a bare microcontroller. And uh, last but not least, is that uh, if there is any interest for such controllers, and if there are, uh, say, at least 10 people who want to get this thing for $60 a piece, can think of making another uh, batch of it. So if you are interested, let me know. So, uh, all right, that's for the theory. Uh, there is also a page with uh, more details and all the links and uh, names and parts. Uh, I will be sharing the presentation later in uh, Hackware Group, so you can get it from there. So, uh, no rocket science here, really. Nothing unusual, it's just a matter of you know, connecting the well-known components together. All right, any questions so far? How long does it take to uh, 3D print the, the yellow one, then? now that you have the fellow version? Uh, it, takes uh, two something hours. Not very long actually, because it is mostly empty inside. And I also designed it in such a way so that to minimize uh, the supports inside. So there are actually very few supports. I tried to make the uh, hollow inside volume, you know, angled at 45 degrees. So it, most of it would be printed nicely without any support. And the supports you still need are pretty easy to get rid of without you know much force or fancy sharp tools or anything. And then there's a cable there from it. Sorry? There's a cable that goes afterwards to something else? Uh, yeah, so cable, uh, well, you can use anything. There are two cables actually. So one is a normal USB cable, uh, micro USB standard thing that's a socket mounted on the Arduino Micro itself. And another is for the sensor. So I just use the, it has uh, three contacts in it. So I just used, uh, a, you know, if you can see on the video, uh, the ones I commonly used on PCBs, but uh, it's not really very convenient because uh, when you are exercising, quite often you might wish to connect and disconnect it and it's not really designed for this. So if you will be doing it often and uh, not being very accurate, eventually you will rip it off. So that's why if there will be a next version, I will replace it with a normal mini jack. Actually, there's plenty of space for mini jacks, so uh, I hopefully won't need to rework the uh, casing much. 
and also a uh, interesting thing which I'm uh, very happy about is that the uh, uh, trigger button you just insert it in there and it, it doesn't have any access to rotate around basically the rows on the PCB surface and the lower part of the casing it keeps it in place so uh, it uh, has but when you press it it uh, travels as much as the button on the PCB basically, uh, less than one millimeter. But it's very easy to assemble and the trigger, uh, it does not acquire any support to print at all. All right, any more questions? I have a question. Um, uh, how about the sensitivity of the joystick? Do you find any problems when you're playing the games and stuff like that, like lag or something? Uh, so for sensitivity, well, obviously for all such sensors, uh, uh, manufacturer recommendation is to install a bi bypass capacitor as close to the sensor as possible. So if, uh, uh, let me just scroll back and show you the picture. Yeah, so here, basically, the big uh, black thingy in uh, the biggest uh, component on the PCB is the sensor itself, and the other two components are the bypass capacitor and the external uh, pull-up resistor. Uh, the reason I decided to add the pull-up resistor is uh, that it is a fairly long and uh, not very well shielded cable. Actually, the original version has had just a flat uh, ribbon cable with no shielding at all. So I had some concerns if uh, the built-in pull-up resistor in Arduino will be sufficient. I believe it is 20K or something. So I put in just 1K to be sure that when it is triggered, it is triggered. And uh, I happen to have these uh, magnets, it's kind of a cube, maybe uh, less than 10 millimeters side. It is pretty strong. I don't remember where I got it from, but it allows the sensor to be triggered from uh, more than two centimeters distance. So obviously you want to maintain some healthy clearance between the moving part of your exercise machine and the sensor. So two, three centimeters, it seems to work. So I uh, didn't have any you know, false uh, events from this trigger so far. Um, Obviously, b before you find uh, a spot on your exercise machine and tape it to the spot, you better test if it works reliably. But, uh, I tried it with a, a few different exercise machines already, uh, no problems at all. Any plans to make it wireless like Bluetooth? Uh, I was actually thinking about this, but uh, well, if you go for production, of course you want it to be, you know, cool and wireless and everything. But for something you go, are going to make at home during the lockdown times, uh, I thought it would be too complex. And also wireless, it means that it uh, got to have a battery. And if you are thinking about uh, sending it to somebody, uh, you know how much trouble it is to send something with a battery inside. So. Uh, I decided not to at this point, but it would be nice. Yeah, it, it would be nice. But uh, still, you know, not essential because when you are exercising, you're pretty much uh, tied to your exercise machine and your possible range of motion is not really so great. So it will not give you much benefits. It probably will make more sense if you add some manual throttle controller to this and make it a, a like real joystick without an exercise machine, then yeah, 
it will make uh, much more sense in this case. Uh, can you demo the whole thing while playing the game? Sorry? Can you do a demonstration while playing the game? Uh, yes. So if we are done with the questions, I'm going to shut down the presentation and start the game because uh, actually another reason why I chose this game is that uh, it is stylized uh, like an 8-bit graphics and it works nicely on a, 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 a small uh, laptop which I happen to have. It happens so that my most powerful machines are on Linux and um, there are not so many good games for this platform. So I had to pick something either old or specifically designed for minimal requirements. So, okay, I'm gonna uh, shut down the presentation and uh, change to the demo part now. All right, so to start with, uh, can you see the controller properties here? Yes. Yeah, so. As I said, joystick, uh, primary button is the red trigger, of course. Then joystick happen to have uh, another button inside of it. So that's button number two and uh, four gamepad uh, kind of buttons. And you see the throttle, actually the, the inter interesting challenge was the, with the software. So you are getting from the sensor one click per revolution now the challenge is how you convert it into some relatively smooth value which is still reasonably reactive that is you see now i'm at full now i stop pedaling and it pretty quickly goes down back to zero not instantly of course but i kind of uh, found some function which worked uh, in a reasonable way okay so now Along the way, I uh, made a few discover a few things I didn't know. I didn't know before that Steam has a nice functionality which allows you to map uh, the game controller you have to kind of standard joystick or gamepad, and you can reassign the axis and the buttons as you wish. So whatever you are uh, comfortable with, you can say that say button number four on the joystick is your green button on the gamepad and tweak it as you want. And it hides all the all these details from the game itself. So the game does not have to support any of these. Team takes care of it for you. What is the functionality? Team, what? Team. It's a, a game service from where you download and uh, launch Steam. the okay, games okay. Yeah. and where you. Steam. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Now bear with me. I'm trying to drag it to the screen. Just bear with me for a moment. My laptop is not super fast. Okay. Uh, so I understand all this functionality only works if uh, you go to a big picture mode. You see this button in the top right corner. So this is what we need. Once you click on it, it behaves pretty much like a game console. Can you see the picture coming up? Not yet, but we see it on your TV. All right. So now, once the big picture mode is on, you can control the rest from your joystick. I, I think there's a very 
your video is very laggy. Uh, well, it is a bit struggling, yeah, to uh, send the video and play the game at the same time. So uh, I'm controlling the whole thing with my controller, no keyboard. So since I uh, finished the final design, I played the game quite a lot and uh, really uh, once you start playing, you won't even notice uh, how, you know, uh, you are pedaling for half an hour or more already. Just time flies much faster than you might think. Literally flying, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. The tiny laptop is really struggling to do too many things at the same time. So this is my wonderful aircraft carrier flying in the sky. So you can select uh, your aircraft, your weapons. Obviously you have to earn all these things before by flying successful missions. Now you press launch. Another great feature about this game, which makes it fun to play, is that uh, the missiles replenish automatically, so you will never run out of ammo. All right, so we are flying. And yet another interesting feature of this game is that the landscape underneath is algorithmically generated every time, so it never repeats, basically. And now, uh, uh, look what happens if I stop pedaling. So you can see on the left, there's a speed indicator, right? So I stop pedaling, it goes down, and big red warning, yeah, I better start pedaling fast. <laughs> oh. 
All right. So I have to cool. keep pedaling to stay airborne now while we are mm. talking. <laughs> Sorry, it didn't work well. All right. <laughs> Probably going to be here for the next so hour. Oh, that was it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very addictive, you know. Once you start playing, oh, time flies. Have you tried playing with other games besides this? All right, so uh, I think that this was it. Any more questions? Any feedback or anything? Have you tried with other games besides this? Uh, sorry, you're dropping out. What was that? Have you tried playing with other games besides this? Uh, I tried a few different flight simulators, but uh, no. It doesn't work well with the serious ones. It has to be something you know, reasonably simple and fun and you know, colorful. But technically, uh, it can work with uh, well, whatever works with the joystick with the throttle control. So if you can find any bike simulator or anything, you can use it with whatever you want. And uh, of course, if your Windows laptop is more powerful, this will be very beneficial because uh, there are uh, many great looking games which are apparently uh, fun to play, but they will require much busier machine that, than I have. So I tried a few, you see, there's uh, bird missions, uh, some wings, uh, something this and that, but I only like this one. So just remember that all these wonderful uh, joystick and gamepad related functions uh, work only in the big picture mode. Right. Anything else from anybody? Great demo. Thank you. It's really lots of fun. No, uh, it was a great fun making it, and it still is great fun playing it pretty much every single day. Alex, was, uh, yeah, is your code available? Uh, yes, the code is available. Uh, I will be posting the presentation uh, just after, and uh, there's a link. But the code is just so trivial, <laughs> nothing to brag about, really. Uh, it's a good start for some of us. <laughs> uh, well, true, true. So it's literally like maybe less than a hundred lines of code and uh, well, the circuitry is very simple as well. So the only fancy part is the mechanical design, the case and design. So I learned quite a few new things about Autodesk Fusion 360 along the way, but it was a great experience. I really enjoyed how it allowed you to shape all these, you know, smooth organic forms nicely and never really worked with it, with it before so it was great fun well okay then if there's yeah. no other questions then uh thank you very much alex i think it was a wonderful presentation and yeah i hope to see it continue being developed and maybe others can maybe anan you can develop it further <laughs> all Make right it smaller right
it it yeah. don't need to be smaller. It has to fit in your hand right. So I had to make it larger. Aha, uh -huh. yes. Yeah, because otherwise you'll just drop it, you will lose the grip in the most critical moment and you'll find it difficult to control. And it was only getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> okay, no thanks. Well, okay, um, let me share my slides. Um, so I believe someone had said uh, they want to make an uh, ask a question. Please go ahead now. Or if anyone else has an announcement you would like to make. Uh, uh, yes, hi. Uh, I'm using a MacBook Pro and I have, um, I'm using a virtual machine called Parallel and I'm also using uh, this uh, bootcamp. Uh, yet I have one problem with uh, one of the soft software that is in Microsoft that I need to input in a COM port number which I cannot find. So how anyone meet a similar problem and how do you overcome this? Anybody can help me? Mm. Can you repeat? Uh, okay, there's there's one there's one software which I'm using uh trying to connect to a hardware, and that requires me to input a COM port number. So right now I'm struggling to find out what how to get a COM port number on the MacBook Pro. Uh, MacBook, uh, no idea. <laughs> Well, yeah. I assume it's a Linux, so you should be yeah. able to to do some. I have I have asked every I have asked everyone I have asked my lecturer asked asked uh, a rep from uh, Parallel and I checked website Facebook. Uh, there's no answer, so I think probably there might be no answer. But it seems like there are some people who managed to do it, but I couldn't get anything out from them. Uh, is it um this compo? Is it serial port? Are you talking about that? Uh, yes, correct. It's a serial port. Ah, uh, I don't know. Maybe you can just try opening up your Arduino, then you can see what port it connects to. Uh, that's the problem. I yeah, I know in Microsoft you have a device manager whereby you can open it up and you can see the compo straight away. Yes, but in, in the chat, in the chat, someone mentioned to do the. You know, slash dev slash star, and it should show you uh, uh, like some device instead of a com port. I think the com port is really a Windows thing, no? Yeah. Com one, com two, whatever. But the in, under 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 the the Mac, it's more like a Linux, so it becomes a like you say ls, and then tti. Tti is like a terminal. Yeah. Tty. Yeah. Tty. Yeah. 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 yeah as in, um... For, for Mac, if you go oh, here, the, here's the bus. Sorry, sorry, sorry. If, if, you, if you go into the terminal and type in the um the ls slash dev slash tty star, it shows you it lists all the devices. Sorry, can you type that down because I don't quite. I, I put it in the clearly. chat. For you. In the okay, chat. thanks. Thank you. Yeah, ls list list all the devices which are not tty. Okay, great. Okay, I see. You. Thank uh, you so much. That helps you. Uh, if anything, just post on the hardware group. I'm sure there's a lot more people there who can help you out. Uh, right. else? And guys, I just posted uh, the presentation to the meeting discussion. It is waiting for somebody to approve it to appear. Okay. Meeting discussion on on hardware, is it? Uh, yeah. Okay. On Facebook, I'll, I'll approve it after the, the meeting. Hmm? Uh, the, yeah. On Facebook, we can see it already. It's a PDF. Yeah. Okay. Great. Excellent. Anything else? Anyone else? Need a job, <laughs> need government grants. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, if there's nothing else, uh, I want to thank uh, Alex for presenting and um, engineers.sg for sponsoring the Zoom mic. mic. Thanks thank so you. much. Uh, and all of you for being here tonight. I'm sure you all have other things to do, but yeah, let's, let's continue this maybe next, next month. So yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
any you guys have anything to present please uh, pm me or any one of the other organizers uh yeah so stay safe stay healthy okay bye. cheers bye thank you thank you bye yeah. you guys. thank you have a good night <laughs>